Now we're going to look at how hybrid orbitals can lead to double and triple bonds. So there are two types of bonds. One is formed by the hybrid and they form sigma bonds. A sigma bond has overlap on the bond axis. And so what that means is if you have two atoms and this is the nucleus, or the nuclei of the two atoms, and here's their electron clouds, the bond is where they overlap in between. So the overlap is right between the two nuclei on the axis of the bond. The other possibility is a pi bond, and this is from p orbitals, you need to keep track that pi is from p, sigma are from the hybrid. Uh, pi bonds, a pi bond has the overlap above and below the axis. And so how this happens is that you have p, um, sorry, you have, yeah, p orbitals. Let me draw the orbitals first. And here's the nuclei. And when it, these two get closer together, what happens is these orbitals kind of spread out to where they're connecting. And they don't connect right between, they connect above and below. So if this has an axis to this bond, that's it, it's right. Um, so this is offset from the axis, it's on either side. And this is why pi bonds can't rotate because if you twist this, these two pieces would come disconnected. Whereas with a, a sigma bond, if you twist one, this part stays connected the whole time. Anyway, let's see how this happens. Okay, here's carbon's valence electrons. And the first thing I'm going to do is promote this electron up to here. So an arrow is an electron. Instead of using the circles for the orbitals, I'm using the lines. Um, but these are, so we have um, an s orbital, one s orbital, three p orbitals. We promoted one up there. That has to happen before we can see how they combine to make a hybrid. The first hybrid I'm going to do is the sp3 hybrid. And when you have sp3 hybrids, what you're doing is you're taking all of these orbitals and you're combining. There's an S and 3P. And of course, we took four orbitals, so we get four out. And they will each have an electron. And the geometry of this is tetrahedral. Okay, let's try a different one. What if we made an sp2 hybrid? So that would be taking these to make the sp2. And we use three orbitals, so we get three out, each with an electron ready to form a bond. And the thing is, we have a p orbital that's left, and it's still there. It doesn't just go away, so I'm going to put it up here. And it has one electron in it. Let's talk about geometries. sp2, the geometry will be three electron groups is how you could say it. So this is trigonal, planar. And then you remember how p orbitals look, they're dumbbell shaped. They have the two lobes. Okay, let's see what, how we get an sp hybrid, what happens. So to get an sp hybrid, we're going to just take these two, which will leave two of the p orbitals left over. So my sp hybrid will have two orbitals because I used two to make it. They'll each have an electron. And then I have p orbitals left. There are two. 
Okay, so I've got two in the hybrid, two in the p orbitals. The hybrids are shaped linear because it's two electron groups is how you can think of it. And then the p orbital is still dumbbell shaped. Okay, let's look at some pictures now. Um, and let's go ahead and add to our notes that um, these make the sigma and these make the pi. It's always the hybrid that makes the sigma bonds and the p orbitals that make the pi. So let's look at um, an example. So this has a double bond. This is ethene, um, also called ethylene. Okay, so the green here is the hybrid, the hybrid orbitals, the sp2. And wherever they overlap, like right here with the hydrogen, that's a sigma bond. So there's a sigma bond right between them. So I see five sigma bonds. Okay. And how many electrons, like let's just think of one carbon, how many electrons does it have over here? In the sigma, I'm sorry, yeah, in the sigma bonds or actually in these in the hybrid there, it has three electrons, one in each one in each of these orbitals. Okay. Carbon has four valence electrons. The other one was in its p orbital. Okay, and do remember that this is, you know, this is one p orbital. Okay, and this is one p orbital. It's just that it's stretched in between. They they started touch, reaching out and touching. Okay, this carbon is the same way. It has three electrons up here, so it has one there. I just put that one on bottom. It doesn't matter. Um, how many bonds is this? It looks like it might be um, two bonds because it has that part and that part, but it is just one pi bond. because there are just two electrons. Remember, one bond is sharing two electrons. And so, and remember, it looks that way because this is one orbital when you do this. This is one orbital. And actually, it kind of connects. But anyway, let's look at um, our other one. This is our sp hybrid. This is ethyne. All otherwise known as uh, acetylene gas. It's used in welding. But so um, again, our green ones are the hybrid. And so we have a sigma bond there, there, there. Okay, and then as far as electrons go, um, each carbon has two electrons already, and the other two electrons are going to be in its p orbitals. So, because if it's sp, that means it has two p orbitals, and each p orbital, of course, is has two lobes, and the other p orbital it has are kind of at a right angle to it, and so this is two p orbitals. And this is kind of turned, but the same concept. And in these orbitals, it has a total of, it has one electron in each orbital. I'm drawing sigmas instead of electrons. Okay, anyway, and then, you know, they didn't show it because I think it makes it hard to look at, but these are connected in here because then you can't really see it. This one as well has, go again, has um, two electrons. So how many bonds are shown here? Well, there are four electrons, so that's two pi bonds. So notice that a triple bond is one sigma 
This one was the sigma and 2 pi. And if you want to go back, actually, and look at this bond, this bond is a sigma and a pi. So let's go to that trend on the next slide. So whenever you have a sigma bond, or a single bond, a single bond involves the hybrid. It's a sigma. Okay. If you have a double bond, um, then it is a sigma and one pi. Sigma from the hybrid, the pi from the p orbital. If you have a triple bond, you have two, one sigma and two pi bonds. Sigma bonds can rotate. Pi bonds cannot. Let's add to this a little bit. Sigma bonds are from the hybrid and pi bonds are for the, from the p orbitals. Let's practice counting sigma and pi bonds. First, for the pi bonds, you look wherever you have a triple bond that's two pi and a sigma. A double bond is two pi, <laughs> one pi and one sigma. And so this one has three pi bonds. And then to count sigma bonds, really just every bond counts as a sigma. Um, every bond has at least one sigma in it. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Okay. And then it asks to label each carbon with a hybrid type. So this carbon, the way we do this is we look at how many electron groups it has, and that tells us that how many um, how many orbitals in the hybrid. This one has two. Remember we have our order. So if it just has two, we just need the first one. It's sp. And let's go ahead and say the geometry as well. sp is linear. Let's do this carbon as well. It's going to be sp, two electron groups. Let's do, and linear, let's do this one. This one has three electron groups. And so it will be sp2 to get up to three. Remember counting exponents there to figure out how many orbitals. And the geometry of that is trigonal planar. If you ever take organic chemistry, which many of you will, it's good to be able to look at a molecule and know the geometry. This one has three electron groups. Again, it's sp2. It'll be trigonal planar as well. It has four electron groups, so this is sp3, and it'd be tetrahedral.